Welcome to this podcast on using arrays in PROC FCMP, presented by Amadeus Software. My name is Bob Newman, and I work for Amadeus, who are experts in SAS and providers of consultancy, support and training for SAS software. Please visit our website, www.amadeus.co.uk, to find out more information on this podcast series, as well as other services we provide. This is the second podcast in a series on the FCMP procedure. The first one, which I will be assuming you have already seen, introduced the basic techniques for defining functions and subroutines. In this second one, we will be looking at how PROC FCMP handles arrays. To make this a little more exciting, the demonstration program will produce a plot of the Mandelbrot set. We are going to look at arrays of fixed size and arrays of variable size. And we are going to look both at passing arrays into the subroutine and declaring arrays within the subroutine. When arrays are involved, we should usually be dealing with subroutines rather than functions, so that our parameters are passed by reference. This will be more efficient than passing them by value into a function. In this example, all our fixed size arrays will have just two elements and will be interpreted as complex numbers. All our arrays of variable size will be square, two-dimensional arrays in which we will store values of a rather complicated and mysterious function called the Mandelbrot function. As a grand finale, we will plot the Mandelbrot set, which looks like this. You've probably seen it before. It's the best known fractal of all. Parts of it are self-similar. That is, if you zoomed in far enough, you would see exactly the same thing again. It's named after Benoit Mandelbrot, who investigated it in the 1980s. The calculations for the Mandelbrot set involve complex numbers, so we will begin by defining some simple complex number functions. A complex number is, as far as we are concerned, an array of two numbers. The first number is the real part, and the second the imaginary part. We will try to avoid mentioning i, the square root of minus 1, in case that frightens anybody. First, we'll define a subroutine to add two complex numbers, and a function to calculate the magnitude of a complex number. We will store our functions and subroutines in library work.funcs in a package called complex. First, a subroutine called zadd, which adds two complex numbers. This has three parameters, the third one, z, being the answer, as we declare with an outargs statement. Each parameter is an array of two elements, and the array size is specified using curly brackets. Calculating the sum of two complex numbers is straightforward. Just sum the real parts and sum the imaginary parts. Notice that when referring to the array elements, we again use curly brackets. In ordinary SAS code, you may be able to get away with using ordinary parentheses for array references, but this is not ordinary SAS code. This is PROC FCMP code, and here it is essential always to use curly brackets with arrays. Parentheses are reserved here for function references. Zmod square is a function, but it uses similar syntax. The modulus of a complex number is a measure of its size, which we will need later. Let's run that code to define these functions. We also need a subroutine to multiply complex numbers. This is only slightly more difficult. Our zmul subroutine needs a local array, which we call t, its real and imaginary parts being tr and ti, respectively. The syntax for declaring this is the same as it would be in ordinary SAS code. We can refer to the array elements either by the names tr and ti, or by their element numbers. This code demonstrates both.
Let's run that code to define the function. So far, all we have defined are functions and subroutines to do elementary arithmetical operations with complex numbers, with the complex numbers being passed to them in the form of fixed-sized two-element arrays. In Zmul, we have also seen a temporary array of fixed size being declared locally. The core of our program is a subroutine called Mandelbrot, which uses these arithmetic functions to evaluate the Mandelbrot function. For any point in the xy plane, this returns an integer value between 1 and n max, n max being a parameter to the subroutine. Although it's important to the demonstration program, this subroutine doesn't use any new PROC FCMP syntax. Two of its parameters are a pair of coordinates x and y, which are interpreted as a complex number c. Another complex number z is initialized to zero. The definitions of these two fixed size arrays c and z are really the only parts of this code that you need to understand. The details of the calculation are not particularly illuminating or important for our present purposes, but for the record, we then calculate a new value of z as z squared plus c. We repeat this process until z gets big, or for a maximum of n max times. The value of the function is the number of times we went round the loop. One can't help wondering what Mr. Mandelbrot was thinking of when he devised this bizarre function, but it does produce a pretty plot, as we shall see. Now we're ready to look at some arrays of variable size. A function called Mandel Array is going to populate an array with values of the Mandelbrot function. Admittedly, the only reason for doing it this way is to demonstrate the syntax. One array of variable size is going to be passed to this function as a parameter. We will also set up a local temporary array of variable size and then set its size to match that of the first array. The third parameter here, valout, is a two-dimensional array of unknown size. Its size will have been defined in the program that calls Mandel Array. We use PROC FCMP's DIM function to discover the size of the first dimension, then the size of the second dimension. Just to show that we can, we also set up a local array, TUMP array, to be exactly the same size as ValOut. The syntax for declaring a temporary array in PROC FCMP is quite different from what it would be in ordinary SAS code. Having declared it, we can then use PROC FCMP's dynamic array routine to set it to the size we want. Both arrays are populated with values of the Mandelbrot function for evenly spaced x values ranging from vmin to vmax and evenly spaced y values ranging from vmin to vmax. We'd better run that code as well. Now we're ready to create a data set we can plot. The array passed to the Mandel array subroutine has to be declared as a temporary array using the standard SAS syntax. Yes, we are back in the real world writing ordinary SAS code again. We now turn the data from the array into a data set. Putting it into an array in the first place was an odd thing to do, but we had some syntax to demonstrate. The interesting range for the Mandelbrot function is for x and y both between minus 2 and plus 2. We set our data values and array size so that we will use every value from minus 2.1 to plus 2.1 by intervals of 0 0.005. So now let's run that code. Finally, it's time to plot the dataset for which we can use ODS graphics, specifically a scatter plot in PROC SGplot. Each point is plotted as a one pixel square 
with its color determined by the value of the Mandelbrot function at that point. We won't go into the ODS graphic syntax, since that isn't the main business of this podcast. We'll run that code to generate the plot. And now we can have a look at it. And there is the finished Mandelbrot set. The dark blue area around the edges corresponds to a function value of 1, red is 2, dark green is 3, and so on. It's quite pretty, and the code that created it used arrays in PROC FCMP. Let's zoom in and have a closer look. Further presentations on PROC FCMP are planned, but that concludes this one. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Amadeus Software podcast. We hope you found it useful. Please make sure to check out the rest of this podcast series via our website. We also welcome any comments or suggestions you may have for future tips. Please feel free to contact us via email at info at amadeus.co.uk by telephone on 01993 848010 or by visiting our website at www.amadeus.co.uk.